Wisdom keepers, wisdom seekers, welcome back to another episode of Wisdom Drops, your source for daily drops of wisdom and savvy guide astrology. My name is Tanya Lasagna, back with another video layering together all the nodal noodles and celestial sauce into something digestible. And today we're discussing it, the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction that is perfecting on April 12th, 2022, as I record. This is a huge aspect and only happens once every 166 years. So this is really meaningful in terms of, hey, we're alive for it. Congratulations for incarnating uh, on the earth at this point in time. Uh, the other thing I want to draw your attention to in terms of how long this cycle is going to be in full effect for, it's not just in effect like this month, this week, whatever. It's in effect for the next 12 years. Why is that? Because Jupiter takes 12 years to go through all 12 signs. It goes through one sign per year, right? So that means that you're going to be under this influence. We, the collective, are under this influence for 12 full years. Obviously, its influence on us is heightened at this point in time when this aspect has perfected. So we're going to jump into what this means, the deeper implications of these two planets yoking themselves together in a conjunction and the significance of this happening in the sign of Pisces. Before I do, make sure you're subscribed if you're new here. I do regular content that is free and available on the internet. Like this video if you haven't already because it really helps the channel grow. Thank you so much to all of you super groovy people who do that. I really appreciate you. And last but not least, wisdomdropsastrology.com is literally live, everybody. It's live. So if you want to build uh, your own understanding of astrology out, if you want to have a personal session with me, this is a great place to go. The link is in the description and the comments down below, wisdomdropsastrology.com. You can book a session with me there. You can learn more about my work there and all that jazz. Okay, cool. Thank you. So the other thing with this to really mention, the kind of key thing, is the significance of both of these planets individually and the significance of them coming together. And then I'm going to go into the high and low vibrations of what this could possibly mean for us, for you, for everybody, okay? So first things first, what is Jupiter? Jupiter is the notion of belief and a higher belief system. It's your viewpoint on the world, on the earth, on society as we know it, on your life, on how things work, on what is a true spiritual authority. That is Jupiter. Everybody wants to associate authority with Saturn, which is true, but Jupiter is a spiritual authority, and you might sit there and say, well, all the planets are spiritual, Tanya, to which I would wholeheartedly agree with you, otherwise they wouldn't exist in the way that they do, right, and their ability to influence us, but Jupiter is like the benevolent, most benevolent outside of maybe the sun, uh, which, hey, yeah, the sun burns, Jupiter can also cause gluttony and like too much, like excess, like gout, right? But in general, Jupiter is literally like celestial Santa. He is a benevolent being who amplifies whatever he touches. And when he brings you joyous, prosperous energy, which he rules over this idea of joy and prosperity, having enough, if you can imagine a really magnanimous sort of person who's really um, kind of, maybe they're a little boisterous, maybe they're a little loud, maybe they're a little kind of like big in their energy field or what have you, but they're loving. It's like a, a sort of jovial uh, thing. It's it's hard to feel like you're not in, in good spirits when you're around that sort of person. It's almost like contagious, the sort of energy that they um, possess and that they offer when just by being in their presence and people like that if you can imagine a person like that who you know or who you've met they have a sort of like field to them that is really attractive right and it's like I say it's hard to not feel um, good when you're around them because it's so big but here's the other side of it if they get in a salty mood or whatever those people also they maintain that big energy field right so it's kind of like which way are you going to sway with the amplification quality of jupiter now that i've kind of gone over that um and just the fact that jupiter rules what you believe is possible what you believe spirit is ultimately uh symbolic of and embodying of what you believe divinity is uh what is your relationship with divinity that is all encompassed in your Jupiter placement. And in this case, transiting Jupiter 
like today, we're seeing the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction. Transiting Jupiter is a an omen of what we are experiencing collectively and individually at any given moment. And if you're alive on planet Earth today, congratulations, you're under the influence of this planet and this conjunction for, like I say, the next 12 years, okay, especially until Jupiter comes back into Pisces. But at that point in time, friends, Jupiter will be back in Pisces, but guess who's already tangoed and cha 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 out? Neptune. Neptune is already in Aries at that point. So this conjunction, again, it's only like every 166 years, okay? So anyways, what is Neptune? Neptune, Neptune, and Neptune. Neptune is considered the higher octave of Venus by modern astrologers, right? Um, meaning that in a benevolent incarnation or a benevolent vibration, Neptune is absolute divine love. Neptune is that place in your heart that feels so pure and clear when you connect to love. Maybe it's a loved one in your life or a loved one who has transcended into the next life, the afterlife. When you connect with them and you feel them in your heart, and it's that sort of pure love that feels so sensitive. And so it's not even fragile. It's just sensitive. It's like very it's so delicate though, in a certain way, it's so, um, it's, it's soft, but it's crystalline. It's like this resonating. I'm seeing just like a, a resonating quartz crystal, like sending out these beautiful rays of energy, you know, this beautiful sort of connection that can transcend the body. It transcends energy. It, it's like a, its own sort of energy. It's, um, and this is very Neptunian. If you've ever heard of Neptune described as this ambiguous energy blob, as many astrologers discuss it as, it's like that, but it's like in the highest vibe or the, the best vibe, let's say. Um, Neptune is really about that sort of energy-based expression of divinity. And if you can sit with the notion of love for a loved one, if you can sit with a notion of love um, maybe you felt it when you're praying to Jesus or praying to Archangel Michael or praying to Isis, you know, the goddess Isis or praying to uh, a goddess, you know, Kuan Yin or a goddess that really resonates with you or a divine being that really resonates to you. Maybe you've sat with them. Maybe you've prayed with them. Maybe you've um, heard them communicate to you. And that's a sort of connection where you you can feel the love you can feel the connection that you have to that divine being or that person in front of you who you love that person who you love who's passed on you can feel them in your heart that sort of really sensitive um feeling it is like a current of water in and of itself even though it's like energy or whatever it almost feels like water if you can think of it like water if you can think of it like the fluidity of water the sensitivity of water if you drop a pebble on the surface of water there's always a ripple you know what i mean so it is delicate in that sense that it's highly mutable and Neptune itself is very mutable. It is a watery planet, right? It is like this gaseous, watery sort of planet. And it's this beautiful blue as well that evokes this certain sense of communication. If you're into chakras and stuff, blue is like the throat chakra, right? It's this certain sense of um, just a, it's a supreme mutability. And that's why its association is with that sign of Pisces. It's why Pisces is associated with Neptune. Do you know what I'm saying? Because Pisces is the fish, right, everybody? And Pisces is the ocean, right? So when you put that together, the fish need oceans or the fish need bodies of water to exist. And then you put together these more like spiritual occult meanings of Neptune, this more like energetic resonance based awareness of Neptune. And you put together that Neptune can also be this idea of like supreme benevolent empathy. Like when you're connected to your loved one like that, maybe, you know, for me, it's somebody I love who's on the other side, you know, or even people I love who are incarnated, but especially like when I vibe with the soul of my loved ones, on the other side with their souls, I can tap into this feeling that I'm talking about with you. And it's like your heart becomes so sensitive. It just makes you want to cry. And sometimes you do, and it's okay to cry. Crying is healthy. If people have ever shamed you for crying. Please try to undo that. Please try to undo that programming. You deserve to be able to cry. 
express yourself openly, regardless of gender, regardless of who you are. Like crying is a good thing. If you feel like you need to cry, you please cry. You know what I mean? And believe in benevolent possibilities. And I'm speaking to myself as I say this because Jupiter amplifies everything it touches. And this is where I'm going to get into the the best vibration possible before I get into the worst. And there's plenty of bad stuff that unfortunately I do need to talk about with y'all today. And I need to put you up on the reality of what this aspect can provide, but I need to provide you with the benevolent ideas of it right now, because that's what I'm being called to do to start with. So the benevolent aspects of this, right, everybody, Jupiter is this amplifying force. And that's really what it comes down to is that Jupiter if you can think of the volume dial, like I always do of a guitar amp, right? Like an amp, you can turn it up to 10 when Jupiter is around because Jupiter is literally the turn up energy. Jupiter is magnanimous, but in any vibration, like I was speaking earlier, Jupiter is an amplifying force. It is the amplifier. So you take one, Jupiter touches it and it becomes 10. You know what I'm saying? It's this idea of you take this little seed, Jupiter touches it, and it's a huge plant. It becomes a mighty redwood. You know what I'm saying? So um, Jupiter is going to amplify in the best sense possible what's on offer now as both of these planets, Jupiter and Neptune, are further elevated in what they can offer because they're in their own sign of Pisces, okay? Um, Jupiter could turn up the absolute benevolent forces of Neptune at this time in the best sense. Jupiter could amplify all that divine compassion and love and ability to connect with um, your guides, with your spirit guides, and with angelic forces, with benevolent spiritual forces, with forces that are of love, of this absolute highest uh, sort of compassion and, and love and, you know, belief, faith. These two things together, y'all, in their best sense, this could be really strong faith. This could be you growing your faith. This could be a minimum. This is an opportunity on this day and every day through the next 12 years, my friends. This is an ability to actively work on growing your spiritual faith. I know that's something that I work on every day because the world will show you so much ugly. The world will show you so much devastation just by virtue of the internet or by people you know in your own life. Everybody has trauma and drama. Everybody literally has this going on at some level. Some of us are more blessed and protected than others, okay? And, you know, sometimes shit happens and you just, it just seems like it's just straight up shit and you have to work on how to reframe it to where there's an opportunity amidst the devastation. And when you see corpses of people you love or just people in general on the streets because of war, um, if as one of many infinite examples, it's really going to test your faith. And so what I, I guess I'm trying to say right now to y'all is that on the best side of this, and you know, there's at least two sides to every coin or every sign, every aspect, every conjunction. Okay. But on the best side of this, y'all, this is an opportunity, an absolute opportunity on this day to give yourself a resolution in your heart to say heart, I want you to beat every beat throughout the next 12 years in growing my faith and set that spell on your own heart. Say, heart, you beat every beat. I want you to grow my faith with every beat that you beat and grow my faith, grow my belief, grow my understanding of spirit in their absolute divinity on this day and every day for the next 12 years. That is my solemn prayer and promise that I sent to the universe in this moment. And so it is. And that's what I just did for myself. So you can do something for your own self like that. If that resonates with you, if that resonates with you, you always just do what resonates with you. Don't let anybody else tell you what to do. You have to do what, what you believe and what follows in your heart as true. But to me, that sort of thing feels healthy, like a healthy way of working with this energy and, you know, calling in benevolence in that way and saying, dear spirit, whatever you call it, dear God, dear benevolent force of this universe, dear creator of this entire world that we exist in and beyond, 
I call upon you for your divine and holy righteous intervention in this moment, in this hour, on this day, and every day from here on out. And through the next 12 years, I ask for your help and your divine holy reconciliation of what is happening in this world, your ability to elevate us into better states of consciousness, where we are more loving, where we are more connected in the best sense possible, where consensual boundaries are acknowledged, where people's health and wellness are prioritized, where we ourselves are able to give ourselves compassion in our darkest moments and our brightest, where we are able to connect with the divine force of this universe at a level where we can believe in the darkest hour, in a better truth, in a better future, from a place of spiritual centeredness, from a place of believing that the sort of beauty is accessible, is attainable, is possible on earth, because we are living miracles, each and every one of us who have come through and incarnated, like, you know how many sperm you outcompeted to get fertilized and to become who you are, you know, like, your soul came here to live this like soul experience in the body. Your soul came here to live in incarnated and you got the opportunity to live in this planet and shit will always happen. You feel because entropy, I guess is real, but like even with the shit and the trauma, it's just a matter of you working through it to become more spiritually resolute and more spiritually, um, in belief with what it is that you ultimately report to and even when terrible things happen that's when your faith is just tested the most and it's tested at this level of you know it's it just feels impossible like how could this be if there is a divine spirit how could this be if there is a divine god if jesus is real the the savior of humans you know whatever you view it as whoever you view it as whatever that means for you there are moments when our faith is tested and believe me i understand believe me i understand but on the highest side of this stuff what you got going on is the ability to grow that faith and to grow that spiritual love and even at the end of the day your psyche could be under attack your uh you know, you could have people who have passed on who you miss dearly and greatly. There, There's just so many traumas in this world. Your physical boundaries could have been infringed on. It could have been any range of things. And at the end of the day, you have an opportunity in any moment, as hard as that moment is, to call upon spiritual help and to call upon your faith and to try to grow your faith, to call upon a higher power um to to help you grow your faith to help you out of spiritual crisis and that's what it is it's an opportunity for not only this day my friends for the next 12 years especially for the next you know few weeks while jupiter is still finishing its transit in pisces uh to really call upon those guides call upon the spiritual forces of the universe who are benevolent cast yourself in white light and, and ask that you be protected and loved and nurtured and supported in your benevolent efforts and trust that spirit will deliver. And if your trust wavers, call upon spirit again and ask for spirit's help to help you not waver. Ask for spirit's help to help you supersede and overcome. Ask for spirit's help to help you get through the darkness until you can see a dawn again. And believe that, you know, your soul is energy, your soul is, your soul is beautiful, and your soul is pure. And if you've done ill, this is a time to repent. If you've done things you regret, this is a time to ask for forgiveness. This is a time to do what is in your power to undo what has been done. If as much as you can, this is a time to express remorse. This is a time to retract the evil that you have been a subject to delivering this is a time to make good with spirit if you need to make good with spirit because of something you did that you shouldn't have done you do that now you do that right now you take this opportunity right now and you ask for your soul to be cleansed and purified by the divine and holy light of this righteous force that is god that is spirit that is goddess that is the benevolent force of this universe and you ask for their help okay in that act because there's every reason in the best case scenario of this for miracles to happen 
And we all know that we need some miracles. You know what I'm saying? We all need some miracles. We could, we could all use at least one miracle in our life. Okay. And this is what you can call in. This is what you can call in. It's what can be on order for you. It's what can be available to you at this time. So call upon your miracle, claim your miracle. Say, I claim my miracle today. I claim my miracle today. I claim my miracle today. I claim my holy miracle on this day. I claim it and I invoke it. I invoke it for me at this moment in time, completely and permanently, and it is mine. You know, something like that, whatever resonates with you. And so it is. And, you know, on the flip side, you know, before I get to that, just a summary of the good quote unquote side, angels, divine beings, spirit guides that are absolutely here to help us heal, like Kuan Yin vibes, like divine protection vibes, um, benevolent being vibes, and, you know, the ability to feel empathic and to increase your own sensitivity. That's the good side. The challenging side of this now, I alluded to some of it, but now we're going into it. We're going to talk about it. Delusions, um, psychological warfare, psychological, spiritual attack. Um, Jupiter is the amplifier, as I already discussed. Leave it at that. Jupiter amplifies. Neptune is delusion. It is psychosis. It is um, substances and means that psychologically alter one's state of consciousness for worse. It is not only the chemical substances, but it is the sort of ominous um, evil that can happen, the sort of ominous evil that is a sort of delusion-based evil. And it's almost like when people are tortured and given alternative, um, what's the word, like realities or portraits, excuse me, of existence, you know, when psychological warfare takes place and people are gaslighted when people are told it's not what you're feeling it's this it's not what you're thinking it's that that's a sort of psychological gaslighting that falls under the the guise of neptune in neptune's more evil or malefic vibrations and neptune can definitely be a distortion of reality neptune is not um you know when it's better and when it's worse, Neptune is an altered sort of state, even in its best aspects. Neptune is a sort of altered sort of state, right? So Neptune is this sort of an ability for better and worse to be in a different sort of state, to be in a different sort of reality that is not what is currently around you. And when it goes bad, that can be an increase in delusions and uh, like, you know, hearing sort of like voices or even literal schizophrenia um which again is not necessarily its own it could be its own psychic distortion if that's what it is you know it might not even be a mental illness per se it might just be a distortion of mental psychic um confluence if you will but whatever it is for you you know that could be that you could also have lower vibrational quote-unquote beings attacking you and spiritual teachers who are not so spiritual, maybe they're shady and they're actually misleading you. And that sort of thing causes its own psychological trauma, but it's about a distortion. That's the emphasis with the negative stuff here. It's a distortion. So it could be telling just a bold face lie in a really charismatic way. It's like, Evil forces can take advantage of this window just as much as good forces because we live in a dichotomous universe. And as Thoth himself said, Hermes said, all is mental. And so in the mental plane for those of us who are spiritual Jedis or whatever is likely a plane that we could be experiencing infiltration of or attack of at this time as Neptune is a spiritual planet. Of course, all the planets are, but Neptune is the delusion-based planet or the illusion, the um, the sort of, it's a paranormal is the word that's coming to me. I don't really know what that word really means, I guess, but it's a sort of like psychic attunement for better and worse. So just be aware that there could be an influx of those sorts of energies at this time. There might be people around you for the next 12 years who tried to drug you in some type of way. So please be careful of that as much as you possibly can. We can't prevent everything, unfortunately, but what you can prevent is what you can prevent. So 
please be aware of that. If people are trying to drug you against your will, like put something in your drink, you don't know what I'm saying. It's not a good time for energies like that. You want to be careful about things like that as much as you can be, because it is a time where you could be given something unbeknownst to you against your will, because Neptune is libations. It is these sort of psychoactive altering substances. Okay. So just be aware of that, be aware of that and be aware of that as much as you can um, try to avoid those scenarios as much as you can. And when, you know, just be aware that this is a cycle and maybe 12 years from now, you'll find that it's a different cycle. Maybe it's not going to be the same scenario as it is now or any given point that you experience these challenges. Maybe that cycle is going to bring a closure to whatever issues you're personally experiencing. Okay. That's a potential. It's a potential reality. Um, that could be happening okay under this influence so do know that it you know in the darkest of hours you have the ability to call upon a spiritual faith and that's i guess what the wisdom i give to myself in those moments and that's the wisdom i guess i offer to you in this moment and any moment you may need that to hear that throughout the next 12 years so it is a rare event it is something uh we're alive for so i guess try to make the most of it, try to make the most of these next few weeks, try to make the most of the next 12 years and ask upon your personal guides, ask for their help and their guidance and their support. I call upon my guides for absolute divine and holy support to help me heal, to help me get through whatever darkness this time brings, to help me understand and distinguish and differentiate my voice from that of others and to follow my path and my spiritual resolution to a divine and holy creator, to a divine and holy universe and a divine and holy creation that is my co-created life. So I ask you to remain in faith and do your part as a human to try to remain in your best vibration that you can. We all waver. It's nothing to be ashamed about. Um, it's something to try to follow in your in your own spiritual direction, though, and allow your guides if you have access to them, you know, even if you don't, everybody has access to them, it just might not feel like it, call upon them because they'll hear you and protect yourself with the means that you know how spending time with water is a good way to do that, I think, because this is happening in Pisces water cleanses, water is purifying, and water will release uh, pent up energies, okay, for, for healing. So I hope this video brings you some value. Make sure you hit that like button if it did. Subscribe if you're new here, Wisdom Drops Astrology to book a reading with me. It's never been easier, never been easier to get a reading with me via wisdomdropsastrology.com. Thank you so much. And with that said, through next time, until next time, may the stars be with you. Peace.